Hey folks, Quill18 here, and this is an actual conversation I had with myself this morning. Hey Quill, you really need to get back to recording your regular series, especially some of the more mainstream stuff. Uh, you need to get some views, you got bills to pay. Also me, Dungeon Crawl? So, all last night I was tossing and turning in bed, I wanted to do another run really, really badly, even though my, my computer is now up and running again, and that's very exciting. I really want to do something else, so I thought I would try a race I hadn't really played before. Uh, the Octopod, who's a very interesting race. I did, I did dabble with a couple of runs last night, and I was like, you know what? I think I would have a lot of fun doing a serious uh, attempt with it. So, the deal with the Octopods is that, well, I mean, they're Octopods. They have four tentacles. They can't wear any real armor. They can only wear a hat, not a helmet, just a hat, uh, a single amulet, but up to eight rings, which is very cool. They also have some really interesting intrinsics that we're gonna take a look at once we get in there. It is considered one of the more advanced races. Now, the, the simple intermediate advanced isn't necessarily a statement of power. It's mostly a statement of complexity of play and how many rules sort of get broken with these things. So the octopods are, are very weird, but very cool. And uh, there's actually a lot of different things that you can do with an octopod. Skill-wise, they're fairly generalist. Um, they're, one, they're one thing because they can't wear armor. Their AC is always going to be fairly low, so that sort of ties into what kind of play you might do. But other than that, they can do a lot of different things. But I was interested in playing a transmuter because I've never really done that before. And the octopods, I think, are probably a really, really good fit for this sort of thing. So let's go ahead and jump into the game. We'll, uh, we'll close that skill window for a second, and we'll talk about our abilities. So if we take a look at our statistics here, our, our innate abilities here as an octopod, we can't wear most types of armor. Sure, fair enough. We are very stealthy in water. We're also amphibious, so we can go through deep water perfectly fine, and it's hard for people to see us there. Okay, not a big deal, but it actually allows us to cheese a few things from time to time. We can wear up to eight rings at the same time, which is amazing once you start finding a bunch of rings. Rings, of course, come a little slow at the start, um, and hitting that critical mass of rings is kind of difficult to do. We can use our tentacles to constrict up to eight enemies at once. So the way it works, I mean, any character that's not using, say, a two-handed sword or a shield, therefore has a free hand, can do... Um, kind of offhand attacks while they do melee attacks. And the same is true with the with the octopod. It sort of does an offhand slap with one of the tentacles. But in addition to that, and I think regardless of what you are carrying, even if you've got a shield or whatever, um, you also get a free attempt at a constrict against anyone you melee. And once someone is constricted, they will take they can't move anymore, and they will take guaranteed, unblockable, undodgeable damage every round from that point forward. Um, and what you can do is you can constrict one person and then attack someone else to constrict them. You can have multiple people constricted at once. I mean, being surrounded by enemies is bad, but constricting multiple people at once is really good. Constriction breaks if you move. It's actually a very, very, very high damage dealer. Uh, and in my very brief experience of dabbling with the Octopod last night, it feels like the Octopod can deal huge amounts of damage, but is extremely squishy, so uh, it's a it's sort of a high-risk kind of build. In addition to that, we have built-in bonus to stealth, something that small races used to have, but no longer. We actually do have an innate stealth bonus, regardless of skill. We actually are also really good at gaining stealth. And we have a base, plus one AC, plus one EV over here. So we start with one AC, but keep in mind, we can't wear armor, so the only way we're going to increase our AC is by wearing a magically enchanted hat or by finding rings of protection. I, I think that's pretty much it. Alternatively, the other way to gain AC is to transmute ourselves into a form with natural AC. Hang on, I take a sip of coffee. It's early here. Ah. Now... Um, the neat thing about these forms, say especially the ice form over here, well, any of the forms, when you shapeshift, your equipment melds into you, which means your armor and your weapons go away uh, and become non-functional. However, your jewelry, including all eight of your rings, remains functional, which means we get to transform into a form that has natural AC, like the ice form does, while still getting the benefit from all our rings and whatnot. So we'll do that. We do start with one spell. Uh, in our, um, in our, I don't know, spell pool over here, which is the beastly appendages. Uh, it causes a vicious spike to grow from one of the caster's tentacles. It's got a custom description for the octopod, which is fun. Increasing their damage of their extra tentacle attacks. 
So it gives us the effect of a tier three mutation, uh, which is pretty strong. It's also almost silent, which is very nice. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a macro right away on my one key to cast that. So I can just whack one and do that sort of thing. Um, the next thing we'll be looking at uh, once we hit level two is we'll be picking up sticks to snakes over here, uh, which transforms arrows in your inventory into snakes and can actually be pretty good especially as we increase our transmutation because we can get multiple case snakes per cast. We'll need a lot of arrows to be able to spam that, but it's going to be all right. Um, in terms of setup here, it, we are going to have a bit of a problem that we're going to be training many different skills a lot of the time. Now, what we could do is we could start off by, say, doing like, you know, pure caster setup. So transmutation, maybe spell casting turned on, and that would be OK. Um, but we are, we're not playing a pure caster, like we could, you could play an octopod, you could grab like uh, the wizard start or the one of the elementalist start and get some offensive spells in your spell book right away <clears throat> and just focus entirely on that, it's pretty good. But we are going to have to get up and melee people. Uh, and at the start, it's gonna be meleeing people in our form. Now there's nothing stopping us from picking up a weapon. And in fact, if we pick up something like a poison dagger or an electrical whip or something like that, that's going to be, I think, pretty useful for us early on. But other than that, we're mostly going to be slapping things. Um, the slap attacks, uh, in your generic melee attacks as any character is actually pretty good. It's, the damage is, is, you know, reasonably close to a lot of the small blades. It also starts pretty fast. It starts at a 1.0, and it can go all the way down to a min attack speed, I think, of 0 0.5. But it does that at skill 27 of unarmed combat. So raising unarmed combat is a little bit painful. On the other hand, uh, all the forms we're going to be transmuting into will be using our unarmed combat skills. So raising it continuously will actually be very good for us. Um, fighting for hit points is going to be important. Dodging to not get hit is going to be important. Notice we don't even have an armor skill. Like if I list all skills that, that are trainable or are available in general, armor just literally doesn't show up at all, which is kind of funny. Um, so I think... I think we're sort of going to be forced to do something like this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to for, uh, focus transmutation. Since we're clearly not rushing to any kind of min delay, we're going to do something like that. I might even turn stealth on. What I think I'm going to do... Um, I mean, we're not going to be doing stabbing, but stealth will be good to, like, avoid some crap. I'm going to start with this, focus on transmutation, because the idea will be when we do memorize sticks to snakes, we want the failure chance to go down a little bit. And if we can get the power up, um, I think it boosts the, the strength of our snakes in addition to uh, just spamming more snakes at once. Uh, one second, I've got to sneeze. The, the only way I could justify doing this recording is if I, I said, I'll start really early in the morning, therefore I'll have time to do, you know, one of my more, you know, typical and popular videos. Uh, so anyway, with that, we're going to start uh, scooting a boot here as an octopod on level one and hope that we don't get in too much trouble. Okay, a rat as our first opponent is fine. I'm just going to break line of sight, which will make it less likely to wake up and get the slap. I mean, we don't have anything to do a stab bonus with right now. Um but you can still get a guaranteed hit. So we can't wear a helmet. And uh, we've got a goblin with a dagger here, which could enable us to start training small blades right away. I'm going to go and cast my beastly appendage. So I get a vicious spike on my transformation almost over. You get that warning. Uh, I think that warning is like when... I should actually double check. I'm assuming it's when you've got a fixed number of turns. Like it always comes when you've got like, I don't know, 10 turns left to your transformate. Oh my God, this is dangerous right from the start. Now I could roll around the pillars here to try to buy a little bit of time, but it's not like there's, I'm not going to regen enough health in that. I think the thing to do is just to recast my spiky appendage and you can see the constrict the icon over there. So he's already taking guaranteed damage. All right. Again, we're very squishy early on with one AC, and we do get 10% less hit points as well. Fewer hit points, less hit points, whatever. So, yeah, we're very squishy early on, and uh, but our damage output is pretty big. Like, if we're going for streak-type play, well, that would have been really nasty. I, it really surprised me that there was more stuff there. I guess what I could have done, um, I should pick up some stones. It's actually a good idea, because they could have just aggroed him in a few different ways. Having some stones just to throw at someone and pull them to me would be good. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna fire a stone over here and just back away. Um, cockroaches are pretty tough, but 
we got our spiky appendage. There we go. And we're going to do that. Um, I'm just going to check the hunger level. There is a tiny bit of hunger generated from beastly appendages. Okay. And we are going to keep spell casting on for at least a little while. Um, we do have the negative one aptitude to that, but that's basically it. Like, we literally only have one negative aptitude, and that's gener general spell casting. And that's actually not that uncommon, to be honest. And we do have a bonus to poison magic, which will be interesting when we try to learn our spider form. Um, what I think I'll do is I'll set a limit on spell casting. We'll bring it up to like four, and then probably sort of chill there for a bit. And I think that's going to be okay. All right, uh, let's rest to get back most of that. Did we find poison needles? Oh, up there. Um, I'm sure we can use a blowgun. I don't know. We'll, we'll grab them. We'll, we'll make a decision about that sort of thing later on. And mostly, our goal is going to be... Oh my god, we found a ring already. That's great. We can't put it on just in case it's a really bad cursed ring. We'll have to wait a scooch. Um, our goal is going to be to spend all our time shape-shifting into awesome, awesome things and um, beating them to death. But... To reach that goal, we will have to use all the tools at our tentacly disposals to get it going. Okay, this should be fairly safe to run up over here. All right. As long as we land a slap. Ah, huh? rune boots. Well, they might be cursed, but, like, the game does like to taunt you by giving you things you can't use. As anyone who's ever played a centaur or a naga know. Because you get, like, the opposite barding. Uh, so, yeah, here's another... There we go. Another good example. Pull back over here. Do that. I didn't bother tentacly append appendaging. Because that should be fine. More scrolls. Uh, generic dagger. And again, even if we get like... Um, even if we get like a dagger of poison or something like that, we might not train it. It's going to be good enough for now. Um, so the delay might never go down, but it'll still make a decent little starter weapon uh, to help us sort of poison plus constrict people. That's it. We're not necessarily looking for the attack speed as much as just landing a few passives. I, I don't know if that's brilliant or not, but... Because the problem is we have a lot of skills we have to train up. Ooh, I failed to cast. There we go. We have too many skills we have to train up, really. Oh, I'm, I am level two. I missed that. So I'm going to learn sticks to snakes. Yes. So uh, we're at 13% over there with transmutations. That's going to be okay. But ooh, okay, these guys can do a fair amount of damage. So, I mean, they're slow, but we're not really in a position that we can sort of kill by kiting. That is too much crap. Okay. So we're going back to this... No, the staircase. This staircase. Oh, I did find out there is a key that you can use to peek up and down the stairs. Um, it's the square brackets. Uh, you have to be in X mode. There you go. And you square bracket. Well, wow, it's pretty laggy. I'm playing on uh, probably the more popular of the crawl servers, as opposed to the Canadian one, uh, which is A, a little closer, and B, not quite as busy. So the Canadian one uh, I play on never lags, but I decided to play on uh, the sort of the original sort of prime server here because more people play on it, and therefore you get a lot of really interesting ghosts. That may have made a slight mistake for lag, but yeah, you can peek up with, like, the, the square brackets. Okay, I'm going to move backwards. Okay, I'm surprised this rat didn't actually spot me. Again, I don't have any stealth skill, but I do have an innate stealth rating. You can see here two pips of stealth just from the start. So I'm moving manually for now just to control where the exploration goes. A second ring, that's great. Okay. I mean, we'll have to take out those worms. And I mean, they're not the deadliest. Do that. You've got a dagger. Okay. Now, see, this is something that could definitely kill us early on, is an adder. Especially since we don't have... We don't know if we've got curing. Um, we don't have any range damage. And we can kill it very fast. We do have our appendage going. You know, I'm not on a streak. I'm going to take a risk. If it kills us super early, then we'll just reroll. Okay, we did get poisoned. 
But it's fairly low level poison. Okay, that's fine. You come to me. If we constrict you, you can't run away. Actually, if we just hit you, you basically die. Okay, so level three, we got our first stat increase. I'm gonna be focusing, I think all my stat increases on dexterity. While spell power does do some things for us, you know, makes our forms last longer. Um, and some of the forms get stronger with spell power. I think more dexterity is mostly going to be the key to our success um, because you do keep your stats while shapeshifted and more evasion, more better, more accuracy and a few different things like that. Let's recast our spell. Let's whip him. Let's rest some more. Yeah, transformation's almost over. That's okay. I am near starving. All right, let's eat one of our rations here. So a lot of the stuff I think that was here, I think these are all the things we just fought. So that area is clear. There's that rat wandering around again. Oh, that kobold. Right, this is the whip kobold, as opposed to the uh, the dagger kobold that we saw. Uh, a ball python doesn't scare me anywhere near as much as an adder. Because it's just damage, it's not poison. Oh, well, I guess he can break the uh, the constrict after all. Okay, that's... None of these are really scary or dangerous, but I don't want to fight them all at once. I should have shapeshifted a little faster. The Kokua, or whatever this is, with 5 damage and high EV, actually can do a surprising amount of, of dangerous... Uh, of damage. But... Like, you can see there, like, we got, we got hit twice. I don't know if it's got, like, unnaturally high accuracy or what. Um, but yeah... Five damage when we've got this, these few hit points definitely adds up. All right, we got some potions. We got an amulet. Oh, that's nice. Uh, we've got sling bullets there. I don't know. We're, we're picking up the stones mostly just to toss and wake people up in a controlled manner. We could shout as well, but that becomes really noisy. Uh, standing on the unexplored downstairs isn't really a viable escape, but I wasn't worried about an escape here. I was just trying to... You know, kite him around. Okay, a single worm. Let's just keep pelting you with rocks. Okay, back up. I'm going to recast my um, transformation. I instantly get the warning that it's not nearly over again. Wow, yeah, see, they, they, no, they can hit 12 damage. We do have them um, constricted. Okay. Uh, I would like to avoid the adder right this second. Uh, I would like to avoid you right now. Now, we know this downstairs is clear, so we can stand on it for a bit. Okay. Um, I'm going to wait to actually read the scrolls, but it's going to happen really soon. These guys are a lot less scary than the worm. I'm actually mostly concerned about the worm coming from behind while I'm fighting those guys. So, we've just got the one aggro here, which is fine. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if wielding a non-magical dagger is actually going to increase my strength in any appreciable way. But you know what would be good against this guy is casting some sticks to snakes. So, what key is that on? That's on B. I'm going to make a macro for that because it's something that will definitely get spammed in some situations. Key to ZB. There we go. A snake, I'm going to make two snakes. So the, uh, the constrictor also constricts. And I summon the adder which actually poisoned him. There we go. Okay. That might have been overkill, but actually, after the damage I took in the last one, I, I should have done that in the start. Now, there's a few little goblins running around. If I hit more than one at a time, it might be a little scary. Uh, you, there you go. Come here. I'm going to tell people to attack that. So he's going to run up and do that. There we go. So yeah, the shouts are useful to tell your allies to do stuff. Their default behavior is to follow. They will... Whoa! Okay, running to the stairs, and we're going to drag one or two up the stairs. A, a wand? A wand of digging. Okay, well, I mean, at least that's not a threat to me, as far as I know. Um, the range attacks are adding up a bit, but yeah, I really want to drag one of these guys up here. Do I just pop down and then pop back over here? Conceivably, there could be too many goblins simultaneously. So, what I'm going to do is come here. Apparently, we're going to aggro a gecko and some goblins. Okay, stop wasting the digging charges. Uh, also, it'd be really nice if you actually ran up and meleeed me here 
instead of just shooting stones at me. Oh, let's eat some more. Let's take a different staircase completely. I can kill all those guys as long as they're just coming piecemeal. And not hitting me a bunch from range. Like that. I suppose I keep leaving my rocks around. There we go. Does he have an actual sling? He does. It might be worth picking up the sling. I don't know... Like, the weapon swapping hotkeys... Ooh, that might be... I don't know if they work between the tentacle and not. I think I'd be forced to, like, equip and unequip all the time. Slightly less convenient to hit those buttons. Chop you up. Okay. Explore some more. Pick up some of these stones. I think the mass density of goblins has dropped down. I don't mind attacking the... Man, it's amazing how stealthy we are despite not having a stealth skill. Uh, I'm going to move here. I just realized we've leveled up a few times. I can learn spider form. Oh shit, Robin. I mean, Robin's not that tough, but she enrages goblins. Now, I think she come... Uh, stop just shooting at me. It's... What was that? Yeah, I can't get him to come at me. She enrages goblins. There's a bunch of them. She, someone's got a wand. All this is very unhappy making. I mean, then that's just not just the digging wand anymore. Anyway, uh, so what I was going to say, uh, we've got uh, spider form over here. 34% failure risk. I mean, it's sort of fine because you preemptively cast it a lot, and so it's still usable right now. But yeah, now the thing is, spider form is actually a transmutation poison magic spell. Poison magic we've got an aptitude for, and the first few levels of skill train quickly. So I'm going to turn on poison magic. I'm going to set a limiter of like, I don't know, two ranks. It's like basically free. So it doesn't even count as, as real training, but we'll make it that much faster for us to do that. Um, we'll hit the rank two poison magic faster than we'll hit rank four transmutation from here, for example. So that's going to be okay. And as far as the rest of our failure things, here yeah, we're down to 6% with beastly appendages. Sticks to snakes, pretty good too. Um, which is definitely something we can use to possibly overwhelm these goblins. We could consider, and maybe should consider, just skipping this level temporarily, which I think might happen here. Okay. Went down the unknown stair, which is a little scarier, but not too bad. Uh, hopefully it's just the one orc. I'll cast my appendages and do that. Yeah, it would be a little early for a big orc pack. But yeah, wizards and especially priests would be terrifying right now. Um, the Noel is actually a little scary. I need to peek to see if he's alone. Yeah, he's not alone. Halberds have the extra range and everything. Not really keen on fighting that right now. Spider form will do a huge number on them. Spider form gives me a lot more EV as well, and technically gives me a whopping two AC. I would double my AC by becoming a spider. Uh, usually a spider form is a squishy form for most people, but for me, it's surprisingly strong. Uh, I think since we've got a little bit more stats since the last time we fought warm, we can really just go and do this without any snakes to whatever. Transmutation just went up a little bit. Uh, what does that put us at for? Spider form still at 34%. Right, because it's not, whole points don't matter as much. They really do do the, um, the incremental fractional stuff. So, uh, let me go and get my own adder here. And then we'll gang up on that one. There we go. Okay, good. And yeah, I can pro... Okay, we might have to put it to the test. I was going to say overwhelm these guys with just a massive amounts of snakes. Um, where's the downstairs? Or, or the upstairs? Is it way over here? Yeah, getting there is a little bit non-viable. But yeah, what we'll do is... Run out of magic here, but... Get started with a few snakes. Um, attack them. I'm going to move over here. He can hit me from here, of course. Oh, there's more gnolls. Yeah, see. I'm just going to use the snakes as a blocker. Uh, cast another one. Tell attack there. 
Oh, I think that command might break as soon as they lose line of sight. Now, they're getting awfully low. And now at least I'm near the stairs. He's been poisoned. If we can drop a few more poisons. Constricts? Yeah. But see, they're able to, like, double up their attacks because of the polearm situation. So that's pretty dangerous. Uh, also dangerous might be running into what's-her-face. So let's go down these stairs instead. Um... It'll be nice when it can spam out a lot of snakes simultaneously. Need more mana and just more skill for that. This should be totally safe. Uh, we're going to explore this way. I'm using shift movement keys here because it, it moves you fairly far, stops at intersections. It also stops if it sees an enemy. It's slightly more convenient than tapping the arrow key in a direction over and over. It's also safer than holding down the arrow key. By quite a bit. I really want to read some scrolls here. I need... I feel like clearing this level is the way to get there, and then we can we can start reading scrolls on the next staircase. So, I mean, a few of those got killed. Uh, Iguana's very dangerous. They can hit, for what, 12? 15 damage! He can two-shot me. We're going to actually put an exclusion over here. To avoid moving into his vision range. We could peek some of these stairs. Another ring! Some more arrows too, which is going to be very useful. Uh, I don't know if you're alone. I'm hoping you are. Okay. Nothing else up there. Alright. I didn't want to just move up to him. Okay. See, a single knoll is fine. I could still soften you up with... Not a snake attack. Alright. My appendage... Okay, there we go. Again, our, our damage output is really good. We're just super squishy, so... I think that's probably the last guy. Ow. Okay. I'm pretty sure he's going to die from the constriction. But, I guess the halberd's a lot more dangerous than some of the other weapons these people are packing. Uh, I'm going to go hide in the corner here. I'm going to summon two snakes. Tell them to attack. Oh, he's not alone. There we go. Jump in on the attack here and there. Again, taking some real damage. Maybe playing this too cavalier. Man, what is it with, like, the lack of, I don't know, corpse density and timing for them? Uh, you should be fine like this. Dart slugs are, sl are more concerned mostly because of the uh, um, their range attacks. So, we're going to go check a bottom stair. Not this one. And we're going to go... And put an exclusion here. Actually, I should have put an exclusion on the other side, but that's okay. So we'll use a different staircase. Okay, this should be fine. Beat that guy. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to read. Now, we have no duplicates of anything. You usually use that as a hint to find your remove curse, your identifies, your um, teleports. This is very annoying, but it's time to read anyway. That was a scroll of noise, so a bunch of people are going to get att attracted to that staircase. So, we're going to go to another one. Over here. Might still be some people running by, but... This was a scroll of fear. Remove curse. Okay, so we've identified remove curse, but clearly we still can't put on the rings, but if we find some more, it'll be helpful. Scroll of fog... Enchant armor, which I don't have any. Maybe I could have waited to do this until I found a hat, but who knows how long that'll do. There's our blink, which we can just uh, cancel. Uh, identify. There's amnesia. I'm not going to amnesia anything yet. And scroll a teleport. Okay, well, that's fine. We're going to go up the stairs. There we go. And come back over here. So, no identify. At least we've identified remove curse, so when we find another one, we can put on a, all our rings. And see what the hell happens. 
Um, Bullfrog Skeleton. That sh should be okay. Seven damage is actually a fair bit. 28 hit points. Actually, you are surprisingly dangerous. I don't think you follow upstairs, though. Uh, so we've kind of run out of stuff now. Well, we can go back over here. That was the noisy stair. So there might be stuff. Tell you what, let me put on my spiky appendage first. Drag these two up. Hit the guy with the axe, because I feel like that might have been more dangerous. And rest. And we can probably take those guys. Appendage on. Drag two of you up. Kill the wizard first before he confuses me or goes invisible or anything like that. I don't know if being invisible breaks constrict. There we go. I could have spread the constricts around. Uh, vampiric dagger. That is super skippable. Because um, while, you know, dagger vampiric stuff does let you, you know, suck out hit points. It's based on a percentage of the damage dealt and daggers are really low damage. I mean, if it had a huge plus, it'd be okay, but no. Alright, so there should just be the one left. Ow! You did hit hard with that war axe. Uh, I'm going to protect myself because I don't have full HP here. Okay, he did drop a poison on me, but I was pretty sure he'd only get the one. And that I'd be okay with that. Uh, what I should do, because I never did set the exclusion over here, is... Oh, he might have been woken up by the Squirrel of Noise. I'm going to do it anyway for now, but I'm betting that Ogre's wandering around now. I mean, there is a range to sound... But the scroll of noise is very loud. I'm going to go ahead and use the appendage, because we know that this guy can actually do a slightly more damage than we might expect. I'm going to get a couple of snakes in here. Get them to move up, and then I'll move up as well. Uh, as long as this is just one at a time, it's going to be okay. The This is starting to be a bit dangerous. This thing uh, has got poison, but it is vulnerable. I don't actually, is it especially susceptible to poison? I know spiders are. It is susceptible to poison. So if you poison this thing, uh, it's going to die much faster. There's the poison. Excellent. Okay. I believe you get less XP for kills that your summons get. War Axe of Flaming. That's yeah, pretty nifty. Not really not what we're looking to do, though. Do I want to peek down here? Let me just verify. Okay, there's nothing really close nearby. In case we gotta run away. Okay, that's that's okay. Scroll of Enchant Armor. Tomahawks of Returning. Um, I'm gonna assume those are probably more damaging than throwing a rock. And, uh, it's good to use when you throw it in such a way it returns, so it's easier to pick. You don't have to go around picking up. I guess that's fine. We'll drop these rocks, and the tomahawks get quivered. That's probably okay. And what I'll do is I'll change it so that, uh, oh, by dropping those, it canceled the auto pickup rule for stones. That's interesting. I didn't realize that would happen automatically, so we're not going to auto pick up stones anymore. Uh, we should probably auto pick up tomahawks, though. There's still that... We didn't... Did we pick up the Wando digging? No, it's still someone out there. Yeah, on the floor with, um... With what's-her-face. Okay, there's another ogre. It must be another one, because this one's still asleep. Close the door. Okay, good. Sometimes they close loudly. But I think doors help block sound. There's the bullfrog skeleton, which is still kind of dangerous. I feel. It's a lot of damage output. Uh, you should be relatively okay, but I'm still going to feel better if I've got a friend to help out. I should have probably appendaged myself, but okay, there we go. I've got more hit points now, so I'm less likely to die from poison before I can kill a single adder. But I'd still rather avoid some of these risks. We can drag one of these up here. What? We took a lot of damage coming up the stairs here. Um, shite. I 
I don't have any duplicates of my potions either. Oh, crap. I moved the wrong way. We're just going to have to hope we can kill this guy before he kills me. Oh, thank God. Go. Attack him. Oh, my God. I took way more damage doing the stair peek than I expected. I mean, I know they get time to take a shot, and I guess they had their um, their pole arms. Yeah, this low AC play. Whew. I still don't want to fight you. Um, I'm still quite... Yeah, there's nothing to check over there. We're sort of boxed in. Uh, this guy should be fine now. He can still hit for a surprising amount. He's got the high EV, but we're getting a little bit better. You should be okay. I don't want to throw into the exclusion area. Another ogre! I mean, we are on D level 4, so I guess that's kind of legit. Oh, and he wakes up. The thing is, we can probably take him with a bunch of snakes. He hits hard, 17 plus, 27 HP. But I can't guarantee it, and the problem is I don't have my, my escape systems at all. I, I desperately need to find a couple more scroll options here. Okay, well, we've avoided him, which is good. And with our high stealth, he'll forget about us pretty quickly, as soon as we're out of sight. Well, high stealth. We haven't been training it. Although, we might want to. Uh, how's our spider form coming along? 22%. Like, the thing is, we might even be able to beat him in spider form. The problem is, like, he can basically two-shot us. Spider form will have, well, two AC instead of one AC, so that's meaningless. Uh, but will give us a boost to EV. But yeah... I think it's probably... We probably can't make a change yet. I'm tempted to turn off the unarmed combat. Even though I'm going to want to, like, basically train it the entire game, I might be okay to delay it for a bit. I could also maybe consider turning off spellcasting for now. But I'd like to get a few ranks in actual stealth skill. Okay, I feel like we've got to we got to go downstairs now. I guess we'll try to hit this one. Okay. Enchant armor. So we're getting a lot of those, despite the fact we'll only ever be able to enchant a single piece of armor, a hat. We haven't found one yet. All right? No. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot you. Didn't return, but it says something about skillful, so I assume it's based on your throwing skill, which we're not really gonna have. Remove curse. Okay. Oh, I didn't realize we have some remove curses. Okay. We've already had one and we gained a second one. So what I can do is I can put on all the rings and amulets. So left tentacle. Right tentacle. Did I hit the wrong button? Something about the scrolls. I'm confused. Did it renumber some stuff? And... On a tentacle. It doesn't specify which one. So, okay. None of these were cursed. Ring of Ice is not helpful at all, is it? Uh, gives you innate... So it gives you resistance to cold and enhances ice magic, which would be nice for ice form, but vulnerability to heat. So, you know, we can take a look over here. I mean, you're swapping an, a resistance for a vulnerability, although I think that's, you know, that's a net loss. The increase to our ice skill is interesting because we will be learning ice form soon. We need one more spell level for that. Um, and we'll need a few ranks of, of ice magic, but I think it's probably fine to just drop the ring of ice. Protection from magic will be good. Resistance from corrosion isn't super relevant right now, but... Is still a nice thing to have. Um, the Amulet of the Gourmand is not something we're going to care about long term, I think. We may as well wear it now. Um, it lets us eat raw meat even when not hungry and get more nutrition from them. 
um, and it gets stronger over time. So we'll be able to eat ch chunks even when we're not hungry, which will help basically resolve all of our food issues. Um, especially since we still have, you know, a fair amount of hunger from some of these spells here. So, uh, Leopard Gecko is totally fine. So, I don't know if you, um, I don't know if Tomahawks can get lost like ammo. You know, like bullets and arrows go away sometimes. Oh, see, that one did, actually. Fails to return to your pack and I think is just lost. Uh, we'll go and get our spiky appendage just to make sure that's a short fight. And wait, okay. Uh, it's probably a singleton. Yeah, which is fine. A single knoll is totally okay. It's just the packs are pretty bad. It squeaks loudly, so that's not appealing. An unknown scroll. Oh, we have a bunch of them? And we don't know identify, so it's probably identify. All right, so we will read that. Yay! And we're going to ID some potions. Uh, lignification is handy. Uh, we're going to ID the one we've got two of. Cancellation. I don't even remember what cancellation does. Ends most magical effects, good or bad, affecting one who drinks it. It also reduces magical contamination. Hmm. Okay. Uh, read. Is it H? And the potion. Read H. And another one. I want I want to keep reading potions or identifying potions until we found um, cure and or heal wounds. I mean, at some point I might start saving the potion. Now there's a blowgun. Oh, I've, I'm underestimating the danger of that. Okay, he's at least constricted, so I figured he couldn't move, but apparently that's not true. Yeah, let's just leave. I don't think they can open doors. Uh, there's another way to get in here, but there. If we do that, the hound can't get into us. Only, like, people with hands can open doors. Or tentacles! Mm, you know what this might be a good time for? Spider form. Spider form. Spider form. Uh, more decks. There you go. You can see we have the 21 invasion, the 2 AC. Um, we've got a fang attack. Uh, we are vulnerable to poison. So, fighting poisonous creatures like that. So when we're in spider form, we're, we have vulnerability to poison. So it becomes very dangerous to fight things like the ants. Um... But, on the other hand, it's also vulnerable to poison. And I was just on autopilot there, so that's the real reason I just kept attacking, attacking, attacking. Uh, we're not faster as a spider, as far as I know. We'll, we'll check again. Um, but I'm pretty sure we are still normal speed. Frid Lizard is fine. I'll use my buff anyway. Centaur Skeleton... Now, this guy will be fast, 8 damage, 28 HP, so we can survive 5 hits from it and probably win a fight. So, yeah, let's go ahead, alright, come at me. There we go, we'll get the spiky appendage. Okay, I don't know if you can constrict skeletons, because there's some, at least some undead you can do it, because you're, I don't know, it's still crushing as opposed to... You know, squeezing the wind out of them or something. Oh, I gotta put a cut in here. Poison magic is reached level 2, which is where we have it set to stop. If we look at our spider form, we're at 17%. Again, that's okay, because we're not generally going to cast it while we're already in melee. We're going to sort of pre-cast it. Um, and beastly appendages and sticks to snakes is really, really, really low now. Uh, to the point where... I could consider turning off the transmutation focus. I still am going to want to continue to train transmutation for more powerful effects. And actually, uh, I could um, say pick up ice form right now, which is something we're going to want. Ice form has a lot more AC than the spider form. Uh, by picking it up, it gives us the ability to study ice magic, which, uh, just like with the poison, we're going to study it to level 2. It won't train as fast because we don't have the aptitude for it. But again, the first couple of levels are still really, really cheap. So getting a couple of rounds of that will help us be able to cast that more reliably a lot faster without really committing a lot of XP. Um, when we do find some spell books, there is a chance that we will be um, uh, switching up. Like, we could, you know, use some offensive magic for a little while. Yeah, we didn't find anything else. Um... 
in some way. I feel like I'm going to turn on stealth now. Now that I'm sort of comfortable with everything I've got and I'm not rushing everything, anything, I will turn on stealth. I will limit stealth to, I don't know, level level five. And we're not going to go around as a stabber, but that should give us enough stealth to mostly be able to, like, see groups and then walk away, especially with our innate stealth bonus. I think it's going to be an incredibly potent tool. It also means if someone does sort of aggro on us, um, we can very quickly get them to forget about us by, you know, pe going around corners and stuff. We're just too quiet, so they lose track of us if they can't keep an eye on us. Um, and that's going to be very handy. So we're going to go and put a cut in here. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.